This video module will give you a brief overview on community analysis. It assumes that you are new to community analysis. We use community analysis procedures to search for patterns in ecological and ethnobotanical data. I'm going to lead you through a simple example that'll show you how this is done. I want to give you a few key terms before we start the example. We collect our data in a form called a two way table. This table has data arranged in a specific way. We'll examine that later. A similarity index is a mathematical expression that lets us calculate the similarity of two places. This similarity is based on how many items they share, and how many items are unique to each place. You'll see how this works later. The dendrogram is a diagram that lets us visualize the similarities of many places. Finally, we have an interpreted diagram. This is where we display our results. It helps us identify patterns. Now that you know some of the vocabulary, let's move on to the example. Imagine that you are in a forest. You look around and see some plants. If you are an ecologist or ethnobotanist, you're likely to ask yourself some questions. How many species are there? What is the diversity of this place? You wander on to another place. You look around and see that it is different. Some of the plants are the same as before. But there are differences. You are likely to ask the same sort of questions at this second place as you did at the first one. How many species are there? What is the diversity? But now you can add a new question. How does this place compare to the other place? We can now get more formal in our analysis. Each of the places that we visited will become a site on which we make our observations. We return to the first place, which we call site 1, and list all of the species on the site. There are three species. We'll call these species A, species B, and species C, for convenience. Then we go to the second place, which we will call site 2. We do the same thing at site 2. We put all of the species that we can see on a list. Rather than making a new list, we simply add the new species to the original list. We keep track of the species which we find on each site by keeping the information for each site in a separate column. We now have enough information to show you the next step. We are going to start analyzing the species data. Our goal is to determine the similarity of the two sites. Start by looking at site 1. How many species were only found at site 1? Only species A was unique to site 1. So the answer is that only one species is found only on site 1. You can see this recorded below that away table. We ask the same question about site 2. And we find that three species, D, E, and F, were found only at site 2. Therefore, we record a value of 3 for the species only found on site 2. Finally, we count the number of species that were found on both sites. These were species B and C. We record a value of 2 for the number of species found on both sites. Now let's go use these summary numbers. We have our summary table at the top of this slide. I have added the letters A, B and C for these values so that you can see where the values are used in the similarity calculation. We are using an index of similarity that was devised by Jacquard. There are many other calculations that can be used. But the Jacquard similarity index works well with the kind of data that we have collected. We plug our values into the equation and calculate the answer. It is 0.33 or 33%. That is the similarity of the two sites. We have done a simple comparison between two places. In a real world situation, we would be interested in comparing many more places. Scientists usually devise a basis for locating the places they will be studying. The organization of these places is their experimental design. Very often, the places are arranged along a path. 
we call such a path, a transect. The diagram here shows a transect, that has five sites. The sites are generally arranged so that they go higher, and higher, in elevation. Here is the two-way table, of the species that have been collected, on the five sites. Before, we used a check mark to indicate the occurrence of a species on a site. Here, we do the same thing, marking that a species is found on a site, by placing the number one in the right location. If a species does not occur on a particular site, then we put the value zero, in that location. I have added a new column, to the right side of the two-way table. This new column, which is called the frequency, is simply the number of sites, on which a species was found. The frequency was easy to calculate. It is the sum of the values in each row, a big frequency value means, that the species is abundant on these sites. Species A, is the most abundant species, in this two-way table, a small frequency value indicates that a species is rare, on these sites. You can see, that there are four species which are rare. Each species was found on only one site. It is important to look carefully at the data, such as the frequency, in order to learn about the species and the sites. The next step, is to take the two-way table, and to run the data through community analysis software. Community analysis software performs the calculations for the Jacquard similarity index, between all of the sites. This software then makes a dendrogram. The dendrogram lets you see the similarity of the sites in a useful visual manner. Our next step is to analyze this dendrogram. I have drawn an ellipse, around the two most similar sites. These are sites 1 and 3. You can see the similarity between site 1, and site 3, by looking at the bar that connects the two sites. Follow the dotted line, up to the Jacquard similarity index scale. You can see, that these two sites are 67% similar, based on the species found. On each site, the dendrogram shows groups, based on the similarity linkages. This dendrogram has two, big groups. These two groups are only 20% similar. This means that the species found on sites 4 and 5, are quite different than the species found on sites 1, 2 and 3. We can refine our dendrogram, just a bit more. Look at the linkage of site 2, to the group formed from sites 1 and 3. Site 2 is about 40% similar to the combined group of sites 1 and 3. This makes it a subset, of the larger group made up of sites 1, 2 and 3. Note that I have colored the dendrograph, to emphasize the groups. Let us return, to our experimental design. This is the diagram, that shows the site locations, along the transect. We now know the similarities, of the sites. That's what we determined with the dendrogram. We group the sites, by their similarities. And we gave each group, a color. Let's add these colors. To this transect diagram, I have added the colors, of the groups, to the diagram, so that we can see how elevation bands, explain how sites are related. This is the pattern, that we have been able to establish, by using community analysis procedures. The example that was used here, looked at plant communities along a transect. There are many more situations that have a similar sort of data. Look for situations, where you have multiple places or things. And each of these places or things, has a different composition, than the other places or things. Each of these situations might lend itself, to using community analysis procedures. As you become more familiar with community analysis, you will see that the two-way table, is the key to thinking about community analysis. If you can fit your data, into this structure, there is a good chance, that you will want to run a community analysis. The example used here had a very small, two-way table. Most analysis projects use larger tables, such as those with 12 to 70 rows, and 8 to 25 columns. Note that you can't have any missing values. 
the numbers in the table are presence or absence of each item.